Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Raymond Yang. Here are tonight's top stories. Hong Kong lowers its economic growth forecast again as the city slides into a technical recession. Two teenagers are jailed for five and a half years each for rioting in an incident in which an elderly man died after being hit with a brick. And 23 more children are admitted to hospital with COVID as about 20,000 health coats change colour since the system kicked off. Hong Kong has further lowered its full-year economic growth forecast after falling into a technical recession. It's the second downgrade in three months. Chloe Fong reports. Officials confirmed that Hong Kong has slipped into a technical recession, dragged down by a poor export performance. After gross domestic product shrank in two successive quarters, the government lowered its gross forecast for the full year to between minus 0.5 percent and 0.5 percent. In February, Finance Chief Po Chen predicted in his budget speech that the economy would expand between 2 percent and 3.5 percent. But in May, it was lowered to between 1 percent and 2 percent. Hong Kong's second quarter GDP shrank by a revised 1.3 percent year-on-year, following the 3.9 percent decline between January and March. But the authorities believe that economic growth in the second half will accelerate, as the city's internal demand has picked up following the relaxation of social distancing rules and an improved labor market. Domestically, economic activities should revive further, provided that the local epidemic situation remains under control. The, com the consumption voucher scheme will continue to support consumer demand. Lin dismissed concerns that a declining population will have an adverse impact on GDP performance. But he hinted that interest rate hikes will weigh on local mortgages, with every 100 basis point hike possibly leading to a 14 percent increase of monthly repayments. Full-year inflation is expected to be at 2 percent. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Two teenagers have been jailed for five and a half years each for rioting in an incident in which an elderly man died after being hit on the head with a brick. The pair had been cleared of manslaughter and wounding. Macy Mock reports. Kelvin Lau and Chen Yin Ting were sentenced to five and a half years in jail each after being found guilty of rioting outside North District Town Hall in Shenzhou during the social unrest in 2019. A jury had earlier acquitted them of manslaughter over the death of a 70-year-old janitor who was struck in the head by a brick hurled during a clash between protesters and people dismantling roadblocks. Lau, who is now 19 years old and unemployed, and 18-year-old student Chan were at the scene but did not throw the brick. They were also cleared of wounding a 61-year-old man on the same day. In mitigation, their lawyers said there was a difference with other rioting cases as the defendants did not throw petrol bombs or commit arson. High Court Judge Esther To said she respected the jury's decision to acquit Lau and Chen of manslaughter and wounding with intent, but that did not reduce the seriousness of the crime of rioting. She said Lau and Chen, who were much younger at the time, lacked adult supervision, which made them unable to foresee the disastrous consequences of their actions. Cho accused the defendants of destroying the city, which was built on the blood, sweat and tears of earlier generations, and said a deterrent penalty should be given. The judge also praised those who removed bricks at the scene of the clash as unsung heroes and commanded police for their investigation. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The government is launching a two-phase campaign to spruce up this city. It begins with a clean-up of hygiene black spots before moving on to improve the landscape. Janice Lowe reports. Hong Kong is cracking down on hygiene black spots with regular cleaning. 
The District Coordination Task Force, headed by Deputy Chief Secretary Chuck Wing Hing, announced that from Sunday, over 600 areas will be targeted. Street cleaning will be stepped up, while the opening hours of rubbish collection points will be extended. The team will also take aim at rodents, setting up 19 overnight units to wipe out the pests and launch a reverence index to assess the effectiveness. The campaign is expected to add more pressure on janitors. We will be but the government said contractors will be reminded to look after their employees' welfare according to the contract. The administration will provide equipment such as fans to improve the working environment if feasible. The second phase of the campaign, aimed at improving the city's landscape, will start in October when the first phase ends. It will include replacing old, dilapidated road signs and possibly new designs for sewage covers. People who want to check on the progress of the campaign will have to wait. Chuck said the key performance index for Phase 1 will only be released when it ends in October. But he pledged that the public will see notable improvements. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. 23 more children under the age of three have been admitted to hospital with COVID. This comes as thousands of health codes have changed colour with the implementation of the colour system. Macy Mock reports. About 20,000 health codes on Leave Home Safe apps changed colour as of today. This follows the launch of a colour health code to complement a shorter hotel quarantine. People infected with COVID will have a red coat and should remain in isolation. Tony Wong, the government's deputy chief information officer, says the red coat will usually last for 14 days. Those who want it changed to blue earlier after recovering so that they can visit restaurants and malls should make a declaration on the government's website. Those with at least two COVID jabs can make the declaration on the seventh day of their quarantine to change the color. They will be required to take two rapid antigen tests, which must return negative results to qualify for the change. Arrivals will get an amber code, which will automatically change to blue at the end of their four-day medical surveillance. Meanwhile, health authorities reported 4,439 new COVID cases, including 217 imported infections. They again urged children to get vaccinated, as another 23 patients under the age of three were admitted to hospital today. The Castle Peak Hospital cluster grew to 17 today, with the addition of nine more cases. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Inbound travelers spent less than 15 minutes going through quarantine and testing procedures at the airport today after the procedure was streamlined. Arrivals have to complete a declaration form before boarding and will be given a green QR code if accepted. They can head straight directly to the arrival hall for PCR and rapid antigen tests. As of noon today, almost 90% of incoming passengers held a green QR code. Overseas, Moscow has warned of a nuclear catastrophe if Ukraine keeps shelling a power plant under the control of the Russians. But Ukraine blames Russia for the attacks on the Saporofrisia nuclear plant. The situation at the nuclear facilities, and in particular at the Saporofrisia nuclear power plant in Ukraine, have been deteriorating rapidly uh, to the point of becoming very alarming. IEA experts have preliminary, have preliminary assessed that there is no immediate threat to nuclear safety as a result of the shelling or other military actions. However, this could change at any moment. Russia and China are in favor of the International Atomic Energy Agency inspecting the plant which is Europe's biggest. The facility in southern Ukraine was occupied by Russian forces shortly after they invaded their neighbour in February. Former US President Donald Trump has come out in support of the Justice Department's request 
to a Florida court to unseal the warrant that enabled FBI agents to raid his Mar-a-Lago estate. I personally approve the decision to seek a search warrant in this matter. Second, the department does not take such a decision lightly. Where possible, it is standard practice to seek less intrusive means as an alternative to a search. The search warrant was authorized by a federal court upon the required finding of probable cause. The FBI searched Trump's mansion on Monday for missing classified documents, which, according to, to the Washington Post, are related to nuclear weapons. But the unprecedented raid triggered a backlash from Republican leaders, while Trump claimed that it was politically motivated. The attorney general said revealing the content of the warrant would help to justify the FBI action. Local investors are gearing up for Hong Kong's largest initial public offering this year. China tourism group Duty Free Corp plans to raise about 2.2 billion US dollars. Shanghai listed China Tourism aims to sell 102 million shares at between $143 and $165 apiece. Trading on the local stock market is expected to begin in two weeks' time. In today's session, tech heavyweights helped the Hang Seng Index gain half a percent. Other gainers included Neening, which jumped nearly 5% on improved first half net profit and revenue. Now let's take a look at the market. The Hang Seng Index ended the week up 93 points. To the top 10 active stocks, the tracker fund was up 14 cents. Meituan was up $2.70 while China Mobile was up 75 cents. Neening was up $3.20, while JD.com was up $1.40. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euros at 8.06, pound sterling 9.51, while the Australian dollar at 5.55. Over in Europe, the London FTSE is currently up 19 points. U.S. healthcare giant Johnson & Johnson will stop selling its talc-based baby powder globally from next year, almost 130 years after the product first appeared on the market. The company has been hit with over 40,000 lawsuits over claims that talc products cause cancer. J&J has paid $3.5 billion U.S. dollars so far to settle some of the cases. It had stopped selling talc-based baby powder in the United States and Canada two years ago. The firm plans to produce a cornstarch-based version instead. On to the weather now. Showers tomorrow morning will give way to sunny intervals later. Temperatures will range between 26 and 30 degrees. The mercury will rise again in the next couple of days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Yeung. Good night.